Good morning. As the little wheel turns, we're still on. I, we have, I have learned that you're still on when the little wheel is clicking. Oh, okay. So my friend Mary is here. Okay. Good morning, sisters and brothers. <laughs> Welcome to Dusty Connect. Yes, as on this first day of October. Yes, a whole new <laughs> month and a new yeah. season. We're excited. We're, we yes. we had this week. We had to get our long sleeves and our <laughs> sweaters yeah, out because it got exactly. cold and wrong. Mm -hmm. It's October weather. But we're so happy that you're here. And as you begin to log on, we like you to type in the chat. So we can see um, that we're not alone and that you're with us and joining. So tell us hi. It's my tell us your name and where you're watching from today. Um, again, this is Pastor Jennifer at the International Christian Fellowship in Rome. And here is Mary Chiari from ICF Rome. Also from I'm from U.S., Texas, Michigan, and I'm from Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> So we're part of the international group. So let us know if you're watching. Say hi in the chat so we can greet you. And um, we are continuing our book study. And I'm so excited because some people have even written me that are not able to watch at noon, but then they watch when they get home from work. Okay. And then, or they got their kids off school and then they're watching. Hi, Helen. We're glad you're here. So um, I even got a couple extra books. Hi, Barb from Michigan. Welcome. I wish you could. I'm going to have to show Mary your picture because Barb has been on every Thursday. Yes. yes. Hi, Bob. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Salome. Good to see you on the platform. God yes. Bless you. Yes. Amen. Hi, Salome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> So as we get started, you know, in Thursday Connect, we try to keep it interactive with the chat. And even those who watch later can can chat, make a comment. I've done that on some of the programs that I watch. But um, what are we learning about Isaiah? What about Isaiah's life? Uh, Mary, when you learned that we were going to study Isaiah, what and I know you said something to me because you've studied Isaiah a few times. Yes. So what about this one made you get excited? Wow, okay. What made me get excited about studying, uh, you know, Isaiah is that, that uh, Isaiah, you know, is a man who, you know, uh, really had the light of Christ, uh, of God, really, you know, and he was bold and he was courageous also too as a, as a prophet. To, you know to talk to the to the people and direct them you know just mm -hmm. give them you know the light message regardless mm -hmm. of the content of the message amen yes amen yes. it's so good yes. when you think about what god's doing in your own life and then you look at his word and you say oh this one's speaking to me again yes. uh it's just so powerful and when i was hi julie hey julie clifton's <laughs> on here hi julie <laughs> We're, <laughs> we wish you were right here. I, I, we're having water today. I already had some tea, but Julie, we miss you in Rome. So we're asking you too, if you're watching, what about Isaiah makes you interested? Or what? how did this um, book study draw your attention to make you want to join? So type that in. Type that in. Why? I, I want to study Isaiah because, hi, Amy. Amy's watching from Padova. So we're so glad you could join us live today. Bless you. Amy, you're in Padova. And um, maybe you could tell us, like, you know, something about this particular book study made me want to join. What, what was it about Isaiah or the book study that encouraged you? Just type that in the chat and we'll see it as we go along. So this morning we're starting on page 33 of chapter two so we're on page 33 of chapter two the last thing we talked about last week was isaiah had talked about the branch of the lord and um, that the branch of the lord is a messianic title for jesus who came as a shoot from the seeming stump of david's dynasty to restore fruitfulness in the land so to start today i wanted to read isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7. Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7. Hi Mary Davina. Yes Barb, Isaiah's message about comfort and hope. We all need comfort and hope in the turmoil in our nation. 
Um, so Isaiah chapter five, in my life application study Bible, it actually calls this section, the song of the vineyard. You know, if Jesus is the vine and, and we are his branches and we're to produce fruit, the, the writer talks about how Isaiah uh, wrote in the prose or the songs, like poetry, mm -hmm. to help people, like Jesus spoke in parables, mm -hmm. to help people think about it in the way they did. Exactly. So, so here's what he says in Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. I will sing for the one I love. Imagine God saying this to you. Mm -hmm. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up, that's hard work. <laughs> he cleared it of stones. If you've ever had to move heavy stones, that's really hard work. And planted it with the choicest vines. If you've ever worked with vines, I got these beautiful new flowers at my house that have vines. and. I went to move one of the plants because I didn't like where it was, but the vine had wrapped around and, and I around. spilled it all out. So vines are, that's hard work. Mm -hmm. But he said, I planted it with the choices of vines. Now listen to this at the end of verse two in chapter five. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, mm -hmm. but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge it will be destroyed. I will break down the wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland and it won't be pruned or cultivated and briars will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. But the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel and the men of Judah and the garden of his delight. He looked for justice. He saw bloodshed for righteousness and he heard cries of distress. So while this may be starting a little bit uh, <laughs> heavy, <laughs> we have to see the prediction exactly. in order to understand the promise and understand the purpose of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So when it talks about the six woes or the wild grapes that are produced instead of good grapes, our book study points out some things. Mary, the yes. first one is that covetousness. Okay, yes, which is uh, also the you know disobedience. Yes, you know. Uh, so we are told uh, in okay, we are in page thirty three. Uh, you know, disobedience to the law, uh, that is Le 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 uh, Leviticus chapter 25, twenty five, twenty verses twenty three to twenty eight, First Kings. Uh, Chapter 21 and from first one to three. The rich divided uh, uh, the poor mm -hmm. and seized la the land. These wealthy exploiters built large mansions and developed extensive farms. But God warned them that their houses would be empty and their harvest uh, major. Mm -hmm. Imagine. 10 acres of grape wine yielding only six gallons of, of wine and six uh, bushels of seed producing half a bushel of grain. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So, so when we think about this first woe, there's mm -hmm. six woes, covetousness, drunkenness, carelessness, deception, Pride and, and injustice. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to the promises in chapter six. Mm -hmm. But first, you know, we have to look at the whole Bible. And sometimes we wonder why things are in turmoil. And if we don't put the priority on the right things first, then we get out of balance. And so covetousness describing the disobedience mm -hmm. to the law, but they thought they had to build a big house. How many times? 
um, in our people groups, mm -hmm. do we feel like we're going to, I want what someone else has. Exactly. And uh, I'm going to build a bigger house mm -hmm. or a bigger mansion mm -hmm. or have a bigger field of grapevines, mm -hmm. but it didn't yield anything. It doesn't give you a satisfaction mm -hmm. because you see the motive is a competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. not, you know, not a, the satisfaction. You mm -hmm. are not contented with yes. what God has given you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's so good. Yeah. So then drunkenness. Um, I'll read this one, then I'll let Mary do carelessness. In the Old Testament, God did not necessarily require total abstinence, but he did warn mm -hmm. against drunkenness. Proverbs 20, verse 1, Proverbs 23, verse 29 through 31, Habakkuk 2, 15. This warning is repeated in the New Testament for believers today in Romans 13, in 1 Corinthians 6, in Ephesians 5. Isaiah described people so addicted to alcohol that they began their revelries as soon as they woke up in the morning and continued drinking late in the night. They would enjoy banquets and music because they could go drink and have these terrible situations. But when judgment comes, these people will hunger and thirst and become food for the grave, it says in verse 14. The eaters will themselves be eaten and the proud drinkers will be brought low. You know, I wanted to speak to this one for just a minute because I know that in different cultures, sometimes people have a glass of wine with their meal and that's between you and the Lord. My mother was killed by a drunk driver. Mm -hmm, yeah. And for me, I don't need to have that access to the alcohol and the problems of alcohol in my life. And I think in this day and age, especially during COVID, while we're locked in our homes mm -hmm. and we think nobody's watching or it doesn't matter, God is saying, don't lend yourself to drunkenness. Don't get addicted to these things. Mm -hmm. Now, we know alcoholism is also an addiction. Yes. But that means it's a sickness, and it can be healed yes. by the power of Jesus yes. Christ. And so we're not going to spend a long time on these six woes, but I do want you to know that in the book of Isaiah, God speaks to these things. Yes. And also he tells us in the New Testament how to turn away from the world mm -hmm. and the corrupt things of the world and the mindset of what it means to have a good party. How many times do we have a good party at ICF <laughs> Rome without any alcohol? Just, you know, the pleasures of the people and sharing and the laughter. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So yeah. you need to learn what you really need in your life yeah. and go towards that when you're feeling weary or tired. Yeah. Don't go towards that bottle of alcohol, according yeah. to the scripture. Number three is carelessness. Yes. Okay. In uh, in uh, Isaiah, um, we're in chapter five. I chapter think, five, mm -hmm. eighteen to nineteen. Isaiah uh, describes people who are about by sin and yet speak frequent uh, frequently of the Lord and His warnings. Mm -hmm. They even mock the Holy One of Israel and dare the Lord to punish them. Verse nineteen. Uh, in uh, the the Chap name in Chap yeah uh, the name Holy One of Israel is used twenty five times in Isaiah. That's the preference of Isaiah. Isaiah preferred to call uh, God the Holy One of Israel. Um, uh, but these sinners had no respect for, for the name. He uh, we we have we have spent skeptical scholars today who speak lightly of the Lord and think they will get away with it. Mm -hmm. No, it is not. Uh, that will not be. Actually, mm -hmm. in, um, yeah, uh, sometimes we find that careless talk can, can be even blasphemy. Mm -hmm. We have had people, you know, uh, talking ill will about God mm -hmm. uh, or insulting God in the times we are in and we need to be careful. God is saying that you will not, such people will not get uh, away with that. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs uh, um, Proverbs 13 and verse 3 says, be careful what you say and protect, uh, be careful what you say and protect your life. A careless talker destroys himself. Mm -hmm. Why? Because as we have seen, you will not get away with it. Anything, in any kind of talk, a careless talk you do, you know, you utter, mm -hmm. and then uh, God hears, and God will, you know, make sure. Tell that us that verse in Proverbs yeah, again. Yeah, Proverbs 13 
and fast three. Proverbs 13, verse 3, yes. which talks about careless talk. talk. And yes, that's so good. Hi, Anissa. Hi, Mary Davina. We're glad to see you. Thank you for helping us today. So the fourth deception or woe that Isaiah talks about in chapter 5 and verse 20 talks about moral standards, which were destroyed by new definitions of sin. Uh, people using God's vocabulary, but not his dictionary. Wow. That's like today's double talk. This kind of language made it easy to deceive people mm -hmm. and to avoid a guilty conscience. Yes. In today's world, increased taxes are actually called revenue enhancements. It's still increased taxes. Mm -hmm. And poor people are fiscal underachievers. Medical malpractice, they say, this is talking about doublespeak, not yeah. the cause of a patient's death. It's, it's called a diagnostic misadventure of high yeah. magnitude. If that was ever double talk and deception, and it's giving people the opportunity to not be accountable for their actions, for their words. So Isaiah goes from this um, saying, don't, don't want what somebody else has in covetousness and don't saturate yourself with the drunkenness so that it subdues the conviction that you may feel in the moment. Don't be careless in what you say and what you do and how you act. And then be careful because that will lead to deception yes. Yes. and um you know maybe you guys would like to share with us has how do you think deception in the world hurts the witness of christ how do you think deception in the world hurts the witness of christ for example this is saying people use god it said don't just use these words carelessly isaiah called him the holy one because he truly was holy yes, yes. um and so when we when we use deception to say, well, you, that's not really sin. That was sin in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. Look, we've already established at the beginning of our study that when what Isaiah said in the Old Testament was fulfilled in the New exactly. Testament. Yes. So if the word is true in the Old Testament and it's true in the New Testament and Isaiah spoke to it in the Old Testament and Jesus spoke to it in the New Testament, then it, we can't change it in order to make ourselves feel better. We have to follow God's word. Mary, you have any thoughts on that? Uh, well, okay. My thought on that is what we need to do is, to, uh, uh, you know, what deception is basically not shining uh, uh, the light of the truth. Mm -hmm. You've got to say things the way they are. Otherwise, contrary to that, of course, you are going against God's, God's will and God's, God's way. Because uh, if you have say, say uh, God, God says that you know you have to rem as we have seen uh, with Isaiah, Isaiah spoke the word of truth, mm -hmm. and that what, what this is what uh, we need to tap from uh, the book of Isaiah or from Isaiah himself as a, uh, a man with character mm -hmm. that you know regardless regardless of uh, the content of truth he was led to you know just give that message why. Know that he hated these people. We we saw that he was a, he was patriotic. He loved his people. He mm -hmm. loved his nation. Good. And so in, in that capacity, he didn't want the people, you know, to be judged. He he already knew because because God had already revealed to him, you know, the consequences of not following, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the message. Mm -hmm. So he was he would he was ready to do anything. Mm -hmm. We saw how he used the metaphors. You know, mm -hmm. to allow the ears to at least. In fact, that's why we see also he used the song. We are talking about in chapter five, where he's now trying another, uh, another style, <laughs> still to capture you know the people, right. yeah, and to tell them exactly you know what the Lord is saying. And can't we learn from that too? Like yeah. the fact that he's he's actually saying some really hard things, yes, but he's doing it in a different yes. style to try to help them understand why. If you do this, these these difficult. If you sow this kind of thing, mm -hmm. you're going to reap a bad harvest or not a harvest at all, like in this vineyard. Mm -hmm. But he's doing it in a picture. I like to say a word picture. Yes. You know, my daughters joke with me. 
anything could be happening and I could say, oh, that, I can see how God would show us the tree by the river means this, because I love to know that God is creative and he wants us to really know what the truth is and to understand that. I like that. He's creative, of course. That's why he's creative. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, <you're pretty> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amen. So he will be creative in helping us understand yes. his principles and his values, but he's also unchanging. Yes. So when God says, I have a certain way for you to live your life because I want you to be blessed beyond measure, he's not going to change his mind and say, well, now that you're in the New Testament, no, you can go ahead and do drunkenness. Or now that you're in 2020 and COVID's here, you can go ahead and have this careless talk because you're bored. We're responsible for what we say, exactly. what we do, the yes. witness of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, how, how have you, if you're in the chat and you feel like sharing with us, Amen. God is creative. Thank you, Amy. Um, let's just go through these six ones because I love to get to the positive, but I don't want to overlook these because it's yeah, important. It's good because these are, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, um, these walls, they also, as I said last time, it, they are signs. Mm -hmm. They are signs uh, which, you know. You said I, warning signs last time. Yeah, yeah. warning signs. <laughs> Because unless you understand the warning signs, then you will drift to the wrong, you know, yeah. destination. Yes, you will drift to the wrong yeah, destination. Yes. That's so, awesome. Uh, as much as you, uh, you, you know, you got to embrace that so that you know where am I heading? Am I heading to the like, uh, you know, destination? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, you just waste all your, you know. Yeah. fuel or all your energy towards the wrong destination. And you know what? How many times yeah. have um, you know, I could look at any one of these woes and say, you know what, there might have been times when I was careless or I didn't think heavy thoughts like I needed to. I asked the Lord to, you know, help me, purify me. Don't let me be deceived by the, the things of the world. We'll get to the next one here in yeah, just a minute. Exactly. But that uh, that we are paying attention. I think Mary and I both drive in Rome <laughs> and you got to pay to all this, pay attention to all the signs, <laughs> all the traffic. Yes. Yes. But sometimes they block a whole road for like one little spot, <laughs> but there's a warning. And if you ignore the warning, you Ooh. might drive your car into a big hole. <laughs> and be surprised to what you get in your letter box. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they give tickets for not paying attention to the warnings. So um, we can't be careless mm -hmm. in this world. We yes. have to be mindful mm -hmm. of what God is saying. And is it did good that also, you know, uh, uh, these these kind of uh, warnings, they they are not only for you know our spiritual you know life, but also for our you know our lifestyle yes. that we live you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you do observe the, uh, this, then you know it yeah. will be even more better. You know, our spiritual uh, walk will also be you know mm -hmm. of a great level. Well, well, yeah. our vine, our grape yard, yes. our grape yes. vineyard yes. is gonna yes be bear fruit. So yes. Mary, do number five. So let me just recap it for someone who's doing notes. Yes. Okay. We have covetousness, drunkenness, yeah. carelessness, deception, and, and now we have pride. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is uh, well. Uh, <laughs> just read it and then tell us <laughs> yeah instead of listening to god the leaders consulted uh, consulted with one another and made decisions based on their own wisdom mm. professing pro, uh, professing themselves to be wise mm. they became fools in romans uh, chapter 1 uh, in Romans chapter 1, 22, we, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, do not be wise. We are being warned here. Mm -hmm. Do not be uh, wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. And that's Proverbs 3, 7. Yes. Uh, and also, actually, also in the Proverbs, in the same uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, five and six uh, just ahead, uh, mm -hmm. when ahead, it says, lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so pride, pride is uh, is something that can really destroy your life. Mm -hmm. It's a self exaltation. Mm -hmm. It's a situation whereby you find that you know mm -hmm. you are no all. You don't have the attitude. You know mm -hmm. that maybe if we look it at the you know the spiritual level, it's where you have the attitude, unteachable attitude, mm -hmm. and just like 
the way we we learned misery that you can never have enough of God. Word, you know, you can never learn enough of God yes. word. We learn every day. Here we are seated this morning just to try and you know get more resources, get more enlightened, mm-hmm. in, and you know uh, get new versions. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the book of Isaiah. We fled maybe, but in another in other scenarios, another message versions. Mm-hmm. But today we are looking it deeper. You mm-hmm. know, uh, at a pro, at a prophet's uh, encounter, mm-hmm. and we are realizing just as I said, I realized okay, wow, Isaiah is a mini Bible. <laughs> So <laughs> as I'm reading it, I, I'm not reading it just, you know, like uh, a prophet, but also I'm looking at its content, comparing it with the, with the whole yes. uh, Bible yes. version. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. I love what Mary said about yeah. pride, that we have to be careful of self, self-exaltation. self mm-hmm. We do live in a world of selfies <laughs> and pictures and a lot of self-talk. And we do say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Mm-hmm. But it's very crucial to understand that I'm not saying I can do all things through me. Exactly. I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. And I'm dependent upon God. Yes. I, I am teachable. I am yes. staying on that potter's wheel. We've all had to learn new things during this year of 2020 yes. and new yes. ways of doing life. Yes, yes. we're still learning. Yes. And um, to look at Isaiah with a different frame of reference is so important. Um, what do you do? This is an honest question for all of you. Yes, Julie. The the walls. Yeah. yeah. God's yield signs not to sin. Amen. Um, what do you do when pride comes on? Do you ever notice if you feel proud about something? Do you ever like I think um it's for me, I know there's times when maybe I uh I've written a really powerful word or I I feel like God, I mean you know, I love to write and I do love the words that God has given me. And, um, but there've been a couple of times when I've worked on something and I felt really like, wow, that's really good. Mm-hmm. What I do personally to avoid being prideful about it is to give it back to God. So there's some things I've done creatively, writing books, um, writing certain, even certain uh, articles or posts in this season where I really felt the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. But before I post it, before I share it, um, I first give it back to God. So that's one thing I do. I give that achievement back to God. The second thing I do is I share that achievement with someone close to me, whether it's my book or my article, maybe with my husband or with a good friend and, and just say, give me some feedback. Let me, let me edit it. Let me, so that I can really know like, okay, this is really from God. And, and I feel God saying yes, but so that's what I've done. What, what have you done at, at a moment? Maybe when you're like making sure, cause you can be confident, yes. but not be prideful. Yeah. Okay. The bottom line, first of all, as you say, is to, to know that, okay, whatever you've done or whatever you have achieved or whatever, you know, that has come and has really made you, you know, uh, happy, you know, and you are sort of feeling proud. Mm. I'm proud that I've, you know, done this. I'm, you know, maybe you are trying to learn a new language and you finally made it. Yes. Yeah. So in the bottom line is, you know, look at it and find where did, where is God in, in that, in what, that which you, you are achievement. You, yeah, yeah. In that achievement. Where is God? Where did God came in? Where did he hold you? How, how did he direct you? Yes. You know, uh, I'll just give us something slight uh, that, uh, you know, I, I, I know I, it's an experience and well, I would say I'm, I'm proud to share about it <laughs> because it's what I keep hearing even up to today. You know, we are here in Rome or rather in Italy and of course we have to communicate, you know, with the locals, <laughs> a different language from what we are speaking now. <laughs> And so for uh, for me to be able to, you know, to interact with them when I came, I had to, you know, to learn their language. But uh, what happened is that I remember up to today that well, as I started, I asked God, God, please help me mm-hmm. learn this language and understand it. Because I told him, because how do you expect me to be sharing your love and your <laughs> with them when I cannot understand the language? You, you got to help me so that I can be able to share your love mm-hmm. and your goodness, you mm-hmm. know, with them. 
And so, and then uh, took uh, that step, uh, step of faith and to engage, mm -hmm. you know, in learning the, the language. Today, as I speak, I've not lived there, but from any time I engage with the, with the locals and the Italian as we speak, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. Uh, thank God they are very accommodating <laughs> with all the mistakes and imperfection. But uh, most of the time I hear them say, oh, you have a very good, you know, yeah. Italian you know, talk. You are very good at your Italian. You are very good at Italian. They, I severely hear this comment. And, you know, I hit back to say, God, I told them it's not, you know, by myself. Amen. You know, in glory, in all the glory to God. Amen. So that's something that, you know, up to today, as much as I know, I sat down in a class, but still, I know I haven't lived there, but so far, you know, hearing from that, I'm not proud whenever they make such comments, Amen. and they severely do. And, but I just get back to, you know, I asked God that please help me because. Mm -hmm. In fact, I told them, especially the old people, how can I even, you know, mm -hmm. uh, communicate with them? Mm -hmm. God is faithful. So, Amen. Yeah. Uh, it gives me a thought, you know, when it when we look at these woes and there's an opposite, there's always an opposite. So covetousness, the thought comes to me that the opposite would be that I'm content. Mm -hmm. I'm not wanting what somebody else mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do something else, but I'm content. Mm -hmm. That would be it. If you're if you're coveting what someone else has, you feel discontented. Uh, uh, but you're content. Mm. Drunkenness, the opposite would be sober. sober that I'm sober-minded. Okay. That I'm not confused and mixed up in my mind, yes. but my mind is clear. Mm -hmm. um, carelessness would be careful. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Yes. You have just seen the... Yeah. Deception would be truth. Yes. That I don't, the truth is what I need to know. Yeah. Shine the light of truth as Isaiah is doing. Yes. yes. And pride would be humility. That yes. we may we remain in that humble posture with the exactly. Lord. Exactly. The Lord is saying, humble yourself yes. and you God will exalt you. <laughs> so, I love it. That's yes. great. We make a good tag team. Mm -hmm. So the sixth one then is injustice. And we're on page 35 in the book. Okay. So um let me just I know Mary's writing some notes for us. So Thank covetousness, you, yes, is uh yeah, you got yes. it. Good, Mary. <laughs> right. You yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Injustice. Did you get deception is truth. Amen. So injustice, the judges who were supposed to enforce the law used their authority to free the guilty and punish the innocent. They were more interested in cocktail parties than fair trials and making money, more interested in making money than promoting justice. Isaiah warned these corrupt politicians that the fire of God's wrath was coming and would burn them up. They were like cut flowers with no roots, beautiful for a time, but destined to die. Um, the phrase in verse 25 about God's anger is repeated. So Isaiah 525 is also repeated in 912, chapter 917, chapter 9, verse 21, and chapter 10, verse 4. He his hand was raised in judgment and would not come down until he completed his work. I'm going to skip down. It says he was telling them, even in captivity a century later, that God was serious about the nation's sins. If they would not repent and accept his offer of pardon, then all he could do was send judgment. You know, we don't like to hear about God sending judgment, <laughs> but... The opposite of injustice is being just, mm -hmm. you know, um, recognizing that there is reason for laws and order that, that we have to do, but also being mindful that we don't want to celebrate injustice on anyone's life. We, we were all created equal, but God is saying, don't get proud no. and say, oh, well, I'm entitled to this party. Yes. I'm entitled to this way but instead to be mindful, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't, I don't see it here on this, but when I'm thinking about the vineyard, mm -hmm. how the grapes are pressed, yes, crushed yes. in order to produce the wine. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, if you're not careful and you don't run away from injustice, that he will have to send his judgment. And we have seen that. Now, remember, that this is about a prediction and a promise and a hope for a future. So we don't just look at these six woes. We're going to go right into this next beautiful passage of song. 
in what Isaiah experienced. Mary, yeah, did you have yeah, anything to yes, add about just, that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted also to say, yeah, I also, that was something also I noted and or rather underlined that uh, God was then and even today is serious about the nation's yes. uh, sins. Yes. In Isaiah 59 and verse 2, uh, he says that your iniquities or rather your sins have separated you with God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, God loves us so, so much, and we have seen, you know, what uh, through this uh, song of Isaiah, you know, and that the way Isaiah has put it, you know, uh, the phrase, uh, the stanzas, or the, the words, you know, he said of the good, all the love that was poured mm -hmm. upon uh, the vineyard, which is literally the, you know, the people, mm -hmm. you know, all everything good was put, you know, in, to, in the people's lives. But instead, you know, they just disobeyed, dis disobeyed or turned away from God. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what you're talking about. It's, it's that turning away of God. It's that iniquity which mm -hmm. has kept us. Yet the, the Lord is very close. As mm -hmm. soon as we repent, as soon as we hear and we, you know, we move towards God, mm -hmm. He's able to embrace. His, his love is still there for Amen. us. Amen. As yes. soon as we move yes. towards God, yes. He yes. embraces us. Yes. I love that, Mary. Yes. As soon as we move towards God, He embraces us. So here's what Isaiah goes on to say in Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 8. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, I'm Isaiah 6, I saw the Lord. So there's all this stuff happening, but Isaiah is saying, I still have my eyes on the Lord, seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among people of unclean lips. But my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See this, so this sacrifice from the altar has touched you. Your guilt is taken yeah, away yeah, 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 and your yeah, yeah, sin yeah. is atoned for. Yeah. That's Mary said, as we go towards yes. the altar, as we go towards God, yeah. he removes our iniquities. Mm -hmm. And then this is what Isaiah says. Then, so I, he was, he saw the Lord in all his holiness. Mm -hmm. He saw himself in all his uncleanness. And the angel of the Lord even brought that hot coal to touch his lips. But it said, because now your sin is taken away. Then I heard, heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. That's what Isaiah is getting us to say. Mary and I have been talking about it this morning already. Here I am, Lord. Maybe you understand where you're coming from. <laughs> amen, amen. So we're going to look at these four stages. He saw the Holy One of Israel and he could not keep quiet. You know, for me, this is why studying God's word is so important because I've grabbed a hold of the glory of God. I've experienced the goodness of God. In the land of the unclean lips, I have seen and experienced the grace and the mercy of God as he purifies my life and he purifies my speech and takes away any discontentment and gives me back the truth so I'm not deceived by the enemy or the world or he's there with me. And so we're going to hit on these things. We may not finish them all today. Um, we're going to try, but um, we'll finish them back next week. So these are what they are insights into chapter six and i'll let mary go first but i'm just going to give them to you sight he saw the lord insight he saw himself vision he saw the need blindness he saw that the nation could not see and he knew he had to answer the call yes julie here i am send me so mary let's look okay. at sight let's look at the site where he saw the lord um 
we assume that Isaiah was in the temple when his marvelous event occurred, but we cannot be sure. The temple referred in, uh, to in verse 1 is a heavenly temple, rather than Solomon's temple. King Uzziah died in 740 BC and was one of Judah's greatest leaders. Uh, even though his, uh, in his latter years, he, he was dis disciplined for disobeying God. In 2 uh, Chronicles 26, uh, a, king, a, king, a great king may have left his throne on earth, but let's uh, look at this. But the greatest king was still seated on the throne Amen. of heaven. Amen. Wow. According to John uh, 12, according to John chapter 12 and 41, this was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He still is seated yes. on the throne. Only here uh, uh, are the seraphim mentioned in, in scripture. And the Hebrew the Hebrew word means to burn and relates these uh, creatures to the holiness of God. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, they repeat, holy, 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 before the throne of God. Some students think that the seraphim are the living creatures described in Revelation chapter 4 and 6. Um, you, when I was the radio, now this is the writer saying, mm -hmm. when I was the, uh, the radio speaker on songs in the night, from the Moody Church in Chicago, I often received creepings from listeners, items they thought might be useful on the weekly broadcast, broadcast. Most of them I have forgotten, but a few of them still uh, stick in my mind. One of the best was when the outlook is break, Mm -hmm. Try the outlook. Uh, and the outlook <laughs> well, is bleak. <laughs> try, uh, yeah, try the outlook. Amen. In other words, look up to Jesus, yes. look up to heavens. Uh, for young Isaiah, the outlook was break. His beloved king had died. His nation was, was in peril, uh, and he could do a very little about it. The outlook may have uh, been bleak, but the outlook was glorious, Amen. God is still uh, on the throne Amen. and reigning as for a sovereign of the universe. Mm -hmm. From heaven's point of view, the whole earth was full of his glory at Isaiah 6 and 3. See Numbers chapter 14, 21 to 22, Psalms 72, 18 to 19. 19. When, you, when your world Okay, now here uh, we are being told, when your world uh, troubles, tumbles in it, uh, sorry, when your world tumbles in, it is good to look uh, at things from heaven's point of view. Oh, wow. And awesome. uh, uh, yeah, I would like uh, to mention that uh, Psalms 121, if you read Psalms, Psalms, uh, if you read Psalms 121, mm -hmm. that will give us... Um, Psalms mm -hmm. 121, let's just start the journey. Mm -hmm. uh, I lift up my hills to the, I lift up my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He watches over you and he will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel and will not slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand and the sun will not harm you nor the moon by day or the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Psalm 121. Amen. Amen. So we look up to the Lord. Look up to the Lord. That's yes. awesome. Amen. Mary, when we're thinking about when the outlook is bleak, what happens when when you get a bad news or you get a bad circumstance that you're walking through and it feels like the conclusion or the, the outcome doesn't look too good, how do you stay in faith? Well, I just get, remember the promises of God. <laughs> that's, you know, that's why the scripture is, you know, so is so important because depending on the situation, you will, you will, uh, you will draw, you will just go and pick 
you mm-hmm. know, the solution of the scripture for that situation mm-hmm. and speak it out. Amen. Speak to the situation, speak the scripture to that situation. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, you remind yourself, you know, the promises of God are yet and amen. Mm-hmm. And what he has spoken will we come, will come to be. Yes. No matter what. That's right. That's and he's right. with you. Amen. You know, he has he has promised to be with you mm-hmm. no matter what. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So seeing the Lord in this world of bleak circumstances is so important. And that's why I think the body of Christ is rising up and Christians around the world that are truly living for Christ, Christ followers, believing in the word of God. Um, we're not uh, our happiness, our joy, our, our contentment is not based on circumstances. No, it can't be. Our, ha- our, 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 um, our uplook for what the future holds is based on what God says, not what the circumstances yes. say. And to know that, you know, I've witnessed several friends who could see that maybe they prayed for, for healing mm-hmm. in a loved one. Mm-hmm. And the Lord chose to heal them in heaven mm-hmm. rather than here on earth. But um, they saw the Lord in that process. I've seen ones who have said, you know what, we were all gathered around and we were praying or singing and we saw the Lord and he comforted us and, and he was with us in that time of trial. So having our sight on the Lord is a priority. Isaiah is telling us to do this. Mm -hmm. And I love that Proverbs um, or Psalm 121. So powerful, so powerful. The second thing Isaiah says is that he notices now in chapter six, I have to have some insight about myself. He says, my lips were unclean. So the sight of a holy God and the sound of a holy hymn of worship brought conviction to Isaiah's heart. And he confessed unclean lips are caused by an unclean heart Mm -hmm. and Isaiah was crying out we look at Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 and 35 and Psalm 51 10 Mm -hmm. Isaiah cried out to be cleansed inwardly and God met his need the coals if the scene on the earth had, had the coals would have come from a brazen altar where sacrificial blood had been shed or perhaps from the censer of the high priest on the day of atonement Isaiah's cleansing came by blood and fire, but it was verified by the word of the Lord. You know, our sin is atoned for. Your guilt is taken away. How many times do we stay in our sickness and our sin and we don't allow God to do it? It says before we can minister to others, we must permit God to minister to ourselves. Before we pronounce woe upon others, we must sincerely say, woe is me. God cleanse me. Isaiah's conviction, there's three things in this I see. God, Isaiah's conviction from the writer of this book study. Conviction led to confession, and confession led to cleansing. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Convention, conviction. So I, he was sensitive to, I have unclean lips. It led to then confessing Mm -hmm. that he had unclean lips. And that confession led to cleansing, that there was no guilt. Our sin is atoned for, the shame is removed, your guilt is taken away. How powerful is that? Like Isaiah, you can look in 1 John 1, 9. Um, So powerful that Isaiah, like many heroes of the faith, saw themselves as sinners first. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And they humbled themselves before God, like Abraham and Jacob and Job and David and Paul and Peter and the woman taken in adultery and so many others who they came before the presence of the Lord, but something changed and they were cleansed. Mary, go ahead and read that first John. Uh, Yeah, 1-9. Okay, 1-9. Okay, first John 1-9. If we confess, uh, uh, let, let us start from eight there so that we get the, the gist of it all. But, uh, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Mm-hmm. And the truth is not in us. Nine, if we confess our sins, we, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive uh, us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. Amen. Did you have any notes on number two that you wanted else to share before we go on to number three? Um, while you're looking at that, mm -hmm. well, I think uh, you know the fast the uh, the different phases that life lessons that we have been given really uh, you know uh, say it's all. We just need to get deeper to them, read each one of them. I'm yes. sure they have uh, you know. Uh, great great uh, information so but it's so yeah. easy for us sorry it's so easy for us let me see what yes ladies i need to sign off okay thank you amy we're glad you joined us um as we look at the world it's easy to call out the sins of the nations but isaiah was showing us first examine yourself and have these insights on a personal level yes yeah. yes just, yeah, it's also good, you know, uh, you know, for, for conviction, for confession, and for uh, for cleansing, it has to start with you. So we have to be self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you have to look back into mm -hmm. into self. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, when you look into self, then you are able to add, you know, to analyze yourself, and you know, you are able to to see, yeah. you know, uh, the condition you are in, and then you all own up, you surrender. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you surrender to God yes. so that you can do all this by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's it's unless there is that discern, unless there is the power of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction, mm -hmm. unless there is that uh, power of the Holy Spirit to you know uh, to help you uh, you know confess and and you know that uh, Holy Spirit also to give you the boldness mm -hmm. to say yes. I surrender, I need to be cleansed. Yes, yes. yes and he cleanses us from that unrighteousness. Yes. So yes. if that's out of the way, then the Bible says the prayers of the righteous yes. are very powerful and effective. So Isaiah is reminding us to see the Lord, yes. see ourselves. And then number three is the vision. Number three is the vision. The nation needed the Lord and the Lord wanted a servant to minister to the people. Amen. So Isaiah volunteered to be that servant. When he says, whom shall I send? And I say, here I am, Lord, send me. He did not discuss, I love this part. He did not discuss his call with the Lord. Isaiah didn't, even though as Moses did in Exodus chapter three to four and Jeremiah in chapter one. But Isaiah accepted the appointment and made himself <laughs> available to his master. Yeah. Never underestimate what God can do with one willing worker. There's an even greater need for laborers today, and we have tremendous opportunities for sharing the gospel. Are you one of God's willing volunteers? <laughs> I mean, when you think about this, I mean, we can learn from Moses, we can learn from Abraham, we can learn from Jeremiah, but when we think about Isaiah, he was volunteering. He didn't argue with God. He didn't say, let's discuss my calling. He said, what do you need? Here I am, send me. And the, don't forget the message content. It wasn't a message that he, <laughs> yeah, you know, it wasn't gonna be an easy call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we, if we can compare Isaiah with uh, Jonah, because mm -hmm. also Jonah was yes. sent by most God and by God had given a message to take to, you know, to a, a kind of the same uh, <laughs> people. So Jonah <laughs> said no, and he had to go in the belly of a whale <laughs> till he finally yeah, figured it he, out. Yeah, but <laughs> I believe as he said no, he wasn't, he wasn't saying no to God because he was disobedient to God. He was, because he was, you know, he knew the kind of people who, who have, he has been given the message to take, how they are and how they are. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, here we see Isaiah, you know, even knowing his people because he loved his people. He yes. knew how they lived, how, yes. how they, they engaged and what, you know, uh, they were capable of still he says, here I am. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mary has said that a couple times today about how he loved his nation. And that was something that really struck me when I was looking at this book study is that, you know, uh, almost sometimes it seems like in our world, people don't want you to love your nation or love your country. But Isaiah was saying, I do love them, but here I am. Send me, let me, let me be your mouthpiece. And so as we, as we see the Lord, as we see ourselves, and then 
we see the need. That's what the vision is, that we see the need and we say yes. Don't underestimate what God will do with your life when you accept the appointment. Don't underestimate what God will do with your life when you accept the assignment. Yes. Because when you accept, listen, I feel this is the Holy yes. Spirit, when you accept yes. the assignment and the appointment, mm -hmm. God also has the anointing to go with the assignment. Yeah. He equips. Yes. He equips. He equips. Yes. And it's so beautiful. Um, let's go to the last one. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so timely. That's my statement. <laughs> okay. Blindness. The nation could, could not see. Uh, the Lord did not give that his servant much encouragement. <laughs> Isaiah's ministry would uh, actually make some people's eyes more blind their ears more deaf, and their hearts more uh, collused. Uh, first, we can see this in verses 9 to 10. Are so important that they are quoted six times in the New Testament. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. In Matthew uh, chapter 13, in Mark uh, 4, in Luke wow, 8, and in John 12, in Acts, uh, 28 and in Romans 11. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. all these are the, uh, the books in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Six times it's been quoted. Mm -hmm. God does not uh, deliberate, deliberately make sinners blind, mm -hmm. deaf, and hard hearted, but the more that, the more that people resist God's truth, uh, the less able they are uh, to receive God's truth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. let me repeat that mm -hmm. again. God does not deliberately make sinners bright, mm -hmm. deaf, and hard-hearted, but the more that people resist God's truth, mm -hmm. the less able they are to receive God's Absolutely. truth. Mm -hmm. But the servant is, in, is to proclaim the word, or, or the word no matter how people respond. Mm. For, the le for the test of uh, ministry is not outward success, but faithfulness to the Lord. Oh, that's awesome. so important. Awesome. So that important. The, uh, but the servant is to proclaim the word, no matter how people respond. Mm -hmm. uh, for, the le for the test of mi ministry is not outward success, but faithful to the Lord. Amen. In Amen. other words, as I just swallow up yeah. that, is that we, it's our job. It's your job <laughs> uh, as a minister, as a you know, as like as a Messiah of today. It's our job to tell. It's God's job to save. Amen. Amen. I love that. <laughs> Pastor Rick says that a lot too. <laughs> Amen. And I love that you know, as we we're finishing this, we'll come back next week. We'll start with some of the discussions on page thirty nine. If you're studying along with us, but when we think about the fact that God's call was not dependent on this perfect nation. It was actually dependent on the fact that the, the nation wasn't perfect, that the people weren't perfect, that they were callous and some would turn away. Mm -hmm. But I don't follow the call of God so that people will clap and cheer. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's prideful. Mm -hmm. I, follow the God, I follow the call of God so that I can be found faithful to the Lord. Our job to tell, God's job to save, and our job to love, mm -hmm. and God's job to redeem. Mm -hmm. And as we have talked many times in Thursday Connect, Grace is what we give because that's what we've been given. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit convicts us so that we live in right standing with God. Mm -hmm. The closing verse of that uh, chapter there on page 38, if you're following along, mm -hmm. said, God told Isaiah that his ministry would end in seeming failure with the land ruined. It would feel like a stump. The Holy Seed would come and they would continue the true faith in the land. Isaiah needed a long range perspective on his ministry or else he would feel like he accomplished nothing. Mm. Go and tell is still God's command Hallelujah. to his people. Yes. Matthew 28, 7, Mark 5, 19. Mm. And he's still waiting for us to reply, here am I, send me. me. Here's what I want you to see in this last thing as we wrap in prayer. Mm. He needed a long range perspective so that he wouldn't feel like he wasn't making progress. Mm. During this year, We've all had to have a long range perspective. Otherwise the immediate would make us feel discouraged, weary, tired, frustrated, sick. But when we have our eyes up, that uh, the uplook, the uplook. <laughs> we have this uplook that God is in charge and that 
I'm, I'm not just doing what I'm doing now. I'm doing it to pass the baton to mm. someone else. I'm doing it to encourage someone else to pick up the mantle, to, to lead by example, to lead even in the midst of difficult circumstances. And it's a reminder when you serve, you might be serving in a workplace today. Maybe you're about to go to work and it's been very discouraging at work and maybe you've been passed up for promotion. But remember, Uplook says God's in charge and I'm responsible to live my life in a right way. I'm responsible to show the love and mercy of Jesus Christ and to, to not step into injustice, but to walk and trust that the Lord has a long range plan. He is the God of the long view. Yes. <laughs> so Mary, what would be one thought you would want to give as we wrap up this, this chapter on the woes and also the promises of how we see the Lord and we accept the call of God on this very difficult time in our world. Yes. Well, I would say that, okay, uh, the woes, let, we'll embla let's embrace the woes. Mm -hmm. And because they'll help us to keep track or to where God is leading us. Mm -hmm. As we, we go to the direction the Lord is calling us to be, Let's be uh, available. Let's mm -hmm. say yes to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not because we have the energy or the know-how, mm -hmm. but because he's going to hold our hearts yes. and walk, us, walk with us through. He's going to bring along our, uh, um, our path, the destiny uh, yes. Yes. connectors, the destiny promoters, the destiny uh, uh, people yes. who will be able to help us fulfill the purpose, not our purpose, mm -hmm. but the purpose for which God is calling us to mm -hmm. towards. Amen. Amen. So beautiful. Amen. I when Mary was just talking, I can just feel the love of, of God and Jesus that Mary has. And I was thinking about mm -hmm. how Isaiah called him the Holy One of Israel. When we love the Holy One, yes, amen. We always yes, <laughs> look up for yes. him. Amen. Um, so I want to just pray for you and um, maybe today as you're thinking about what God is asking you to say yes to, or maybe you've already said yes, but you're like, oh, what does that mean? Or what is God? Remember, he's the God of the long view and he has a long range in motion for you. And your life is determined to be a witness and an influence wherever you are. And in whatever circumstances, whether it's uh, my dad had to go to the hospital for cancer treatment many times over a 20 year period. And every time I watched him, Tell a nurse, tell a blood person, the person who's taking the, the phlebotomist, taking the blood or the x-ray technician, you know, God loves you. He's got something good for you today. So he, he saw God's purpose even in the midst of his pain. And um, I know that God wants you to know today. He just wants you to say, here I am, Lord. I, I'm your vessel. Send me, send me, send me. And maybe today it might be send you to the grocery store. Maybe it might be send you to the neighbor. Maybe it might be send you to your church online so you can type and encourage those who are watching. It doesn't look like, I remember Isaiah didn't ask God, what's, what does it all mean? He just said, I'll go. Tell me, tell me. So today, God, we're saying, wherever you're sending me this afternoon, I want to be Maybe your light. Maybe prayer backup for someone. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You may not even know them. Yes. But the Lord will just bring, you know, into your mind. Uh, you know, pray for, for this and this. Yes. Yeah. You can never yeah. underestimate the power of one conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, Pastor Rick always says we're one prayer away from a miracle. You might be a part of that prayer yes. and that miracle for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we thank you so much for this day and this time we've had. I pray blessings upon all of our brothers and sisters that have watched and will watch. I pray that we will we'll, we'll be ignited yes. by the Holy Spirit yes, Lord. to be sensitive to these woes, that we will not let these things get break into our lifestyle, yes, that we will not be careless, we'll be careful, and yes. we will be sober-minded, and we will be walking in humility and trusting you, but also, yes. God, that we will we will see the Lord. Mm -hmm. We will say you are the Holy One. Yes, and we will see the insight that you have for yes, our lives. Jesus. And we will make ourselves available to you. We yes. will see the vision that you have. So God, let each one today know 
that you have something awesome for them to do. It may yeah. be a conversation with a family member. Yes. It may be a conversation with a loved one, yes. or a friend, yes. and that in that moment, they will be reminded of today that yeah. God, I made myself available and you gave me this opportunity. So I thank you, Lord, for being with us. We bless your people. Yes. Listen, Sunday is communion. Yeah. In Jesus' name, yeah. we rejoice yeah. over the Lord. And so we want you to join us online. We want you to join us on campus. You can still register. And then we've started to announce it, but on October 11th, yeah. we're, we're going to two services. services. We're also having kids that can come back yes. to, to service here on campus. So be watching the Facebook page. The website will have all the information as well. The check-in registration online will show you what so many things you can you can register for. So God bless you. We love you. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mary. Thank, thank, you, blessing. thank you. Thank you so much. We are glad that you joined. Amen. Amen. God bless. Love you.